Hey! Welcome back to Boxes and Bubbles, where today we're looking at Arkham City Order of the World number 4 from DC Comics. Written by Dan Waters, with art by Danny. This team previously worked together on Coffin Bound, which was a book I loved. It was deeply philosophical, bizarre, darkly funny, and occasionally grotesque. And those are all things that carry over to their new book, Arkham City The Order of the World. Having read Coffin Bound, I'm quite surprised, in the best way, that DC let this team get their hands on Gotham. That is to say, the style and themes of Coffin Bound were way different than DC Fair, even Black Label releases. Though it's an unexpected choice of creative team, it's definitely one that I was happy to see cross over into a more mainstream comic. Though calling Arkham City mainstream does it something of a disservice. In this video, I'm taking a look at issue 4, which hones in on two characters in particular, so I don't need to spoil the main plot of the series, I will say though, the main crux of this story is a strange and very clever way of looking at both Gotham and Arkham that we've never seen before, and I doubt we'll ever see again. I highly recommend checking this book out from the beginning, but if you haven't read issues 1 to 3 yet, they won't be spoiled for you here. As usual, I'll pick around the main events of this issue too, so the key moments are still a surprise for you, if you decide to pick it up. So what is Arkham City? It's a dark, spiralling story about the villains of Gotham and a psychiatrist named Dr. Joy who firmly believes that they are all people in need of help, not punishment. When a bunch of Arkham inmates escape, she gets help from one in particular to find them. This is the Ten-Eyed Man and he's a gross, creepy boy and I love him! This is seriously one of my favourite character designs in all of comics. He's a contortionist with eyeballs in the tips of his fingers. He's horrible in a way that appeals to me so much if I ever get to attend a comic convention, I would love to wear this costume. Look at this man! Blech. Awesome! He's able to correctly tell Dr. Joy where various escaped inmates are, and though initially she thinks he's just deranged, his predictions turn out to be correct on multiple occasions. Dr. Joy slowly starts to believe the things that he's saying, which include talk about the ghost of Amadeus Arkham and the need to perform rituals using human jawbones. All the while, elsewhere in Gotham, Religious zealot Azrael has been hunting down the escaped Arkham inmates. Ten-Eyed Man continues to correctly tell Joy where to find the escapees, and so we have to wonder, are these coincidences, or does he truly have mystical powers? Is he correct, or is it just confirmation bias causing Dr. Joy to think so? Worse yet, is she being dragged into madness with him? And that's where issue 4 picks up. At the very start, Dr. Joy sees what she thinks is the ghost of Amadeus Arkham, further calling into question either the existence of the Ten-Eyed Man's powers or her sanity. She's terrified, but not for long because Azrael begins to chase her and the Ten-Eyed Man, and there is a confrontation from which she is luckily able to escape. Thanks to the Ten-Eyed Man, she has some vague ideas about where in Gotham might be good places for her to go. Across the city, in an apartment building, are two characters we've seen before. They're becoming increasingly sick, and they've begun to suspect that it's the fault of the apartment they're living in. Their neighbour has heard them talking through the wall and says, Hello, it's your neighbours from next door. We haven't met yet. I hope you don't mind, but we overheard you through the wall, asking for a doctor. I'm a doctor myself, you see. The woman inside says, No, we can't let you in. What if we're contagious? My skin, it's burning. My hair, our teeth, we're falling apart. Hmm, any nausea and vomiting? Blood in the stool? From your symptoms, it almost sounds like you're suffering from radiation poisoning. Radiation? Where would we come into contact with that? And that's when we get this next page reveal. That all along, they've been living next door to Dr. Phosphorus, a highly radioactive former doctor. He's living together with a vampire named Nocturna. This sequence is why, out of all the issues so far of this book, I chose to talk about this one today. It's difficult to put into words the feeling that this gives me. Phosphorus is killing these people, but he seems completely unaware of it. He knocks on the door offering help, and returns dejected when they refuse. He and Nocturna talk about it, and they're both disappointed that their neighbours aren't friendly. It's so dark, but so funny at the same time. There's something disturbing in it, yet it made me laugh. If you've ever seen or heard the excellent Chris Morris comedy Blue Jam, or Jam as it was called when the radio show was turned into a TV sketch show, it gives me that same sick amusement. As if David Lynch has just told a deeply unsettling, but still very good joke. It's a particular kind of mood, and if it's one you enjoy, definitely check out Jam and Coffinbound for more. Since they're upset about their not-so-neighbourly neighbours, 
They're delighted to see someone that Dr. Phosphorus knows coming into the building, and they're very welcoming. Dr. Phosphorus and Dr. Joy have met previously, though that was when she was treating him for mental health issues. Nocturna fusses about trying her best to offer Dr. Joy a drink, but finding that she only has pig's blood in the house. Dr. Joy earnestly questions them about the ritual the Ten-Eyed Man has in mind, but they tell her that he's talking nonsense, that all his delusions are part of a manic condition. So there's a brilliant role reversal now, where Dr. Phosphorus is questioning Dr. Joy. The doctor is now being examined by the patient. It throws more madness into this spiral. Is Dr. Joy so far gone that a former patient can tell her that she's losing her mind? Does he just simply not believe the Ten-Eyed Man? Or is everything real after all? I mean, she's sitting in a glowing skeleton's living room with a vampire. Dr. Phosphorus asks her to leave and complains that, post-treatment, he and Nocturna have tried so hard to become normal, and yet even the neighbors shun them. Nocturna says, yes, look, through the hole in the wall. They're just laying there sulking. <laughs> Again, deeply creepy yet very funny. Panicked, Dr. Joy tries to get the neighbors some help. And while she and the others converse, we transition to a horrifying character with no face at all. Just a head with a giant hole in it. It's pretty disgusting. And they're referencing the start of the book. Azrael has managed to escape her, whoever she is. But she says that maybe it's time to collect all the people that he's collected in the hospitals for them. I have no idea what she and her accomplice have in mind, but if it's anywhere near as unhinged as the rest of this series, it's not going to be pleasant. This is a crazy spiraling story of madness and I really can't wait to find out how this is going to turn out. But that's all for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please take a look around the rest of my channel for some more spoiler free comic reviews. And follow me on Twitter at BoxesNBubbles to hear about the dozens of other comic books I read every week but don't have time to make videos for. And while I'm here, I need to ask a favour of everybody. When I first decided to start this channel, I really didn't want to be the guy that says like, share and subscribe at the end of every video. Personally, I find it really grating because, you know, anyone who's used YouTube before knows how that works. You don't need to say it. And it feels kind of like if what you make is good, then people are going to do that by themselves. You don't need to tell them how to feel or what to think about it. Actually, I've come across kind of a problem on YouTube. If you have less than 50 subscribers, your videos might not show up in searches, which means that my stuff literally can't be found by anybody else that I don't share the link with. And once you reach 100 subscribers, you're able to have your own custom URL. So instead of having youtube.com slash 5471 whatever, you can have your channel name. So liking and sharing, I'm not really worried about that. It's just 100 subscribers I need to get that custom URL and start showing up in the searches so that people can find me on their own. So as much as I don't like to ask, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a sub just to boost me over that 100 so I can get my nice shiny custom URL. Thank you so much.